Disaster Risk Reduction Strategies and Management Welcome to the Risk Management of Everything channel. On this channel, you will find videos on risk management and the application of risk management to diverse areas and sectors. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you. Disaster Risk Reduction Strategies and Management are discussed in this video. Now, let us start. The United Nations has defined disaster as a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or society, which involve widespread human, material, economic or environmental impacts that exceed the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. Disaster management is how we deal with the human, material, economic or environmental impacts of a said disaster. It is the process of how we prepare for, respond to and learn from the effects of major failures. Though often caused by nature, disasters can have human origins. According to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies a disaster occurs when a hazard impacts vulnerable people. The combination of hazards, vulnerability and inability to reduce the potential negative consequences of risk results in disaster. Disaster management is strategic planning and procedure that is administered and employed to protect critical infrastructures, also known as critical assets, from severe damages when natural or human-made calamities and catastrophic even occur. Disaster management plans are multi-layered and are aimed to address such issues as floods, hurricanes, fires, bombings, and even mass failures of utilities or the rapid spread of disease. The disaster plan is likely to address such important matters as relinquishing people from an impacted region, arranging temporary housing, food, and medical care. Disasters can be either natural or human-made events and can include pandemics, technological disasters or environmental cataclysms. When a hazard event, such as a drought, flood, cyclone, earthquake or tsunami, occurs, triggering a loss of life and damage to infrastructure, it highlights the reality that society and its assets are vulnerable to such events. When discussing disaster risk management, a disaster can highlight the geographical area where the community is settled is exposed to such a hazard. The society, including individuals, and its infrastructure, assets and other processes, as well as services that may have experienced damage or destruction, are vulnerable. One of the biggest challenges of disaster management is the need to be prepared for a wide range of contingencies. A good place to begin a discussion of disaster management is by considering what constitutes a disaster. Types of disaster Though vulnerability to disaster varies, but, no country is immune from disaster. There are four main types of disaster, natural disasters, man-made disasters, complex emergencies, and pandemic emergencies. Now, let us discuss types of disaster. 1. Natural Disasters According to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies natural disasters are naturally occurring physical phenomena caused either by rapid or slow onset events that have immediate impacts on human health and secondary impacts causing further death and suffering. These disasters include floods, hurricanes, earthquakes and volcano eruptions that can have immediate impacts on human health, as well as secondary impacts causing further death and suffering from floods causing landslides, earthquakes resulting in fires, tsunamis causing widespread flooding and typhoons sinking ferries. The United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction characterizes natural disasters in relation to, 1, their magnitude or intensity, 2, speed of onset, 3, duration and, 4, area of extent. For instance, earthquakes are of short duration and usually affect a relatively small region, whereas droughts are slow to develop and fade away and often affect large regions. 2. Man-made disasters Man-made disasters as viewed by the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies are events that are caused by humans which occur in or close to human settlements often caused as the result of environmental or technological emergencies. These emergencies include environmental degradation, pollution, 
technological or industrial accidents, usually involving hazardous material, and occur where these materials are produced, used or transported. Large forest fires are generally included in this definition because they tend to be caused by humans. 3. Complex Emergencies Some disasters can result from multiple hazards, or, more often, to a complex combination of both natural and man-made causes which involve a breakdown of authority, looting and attacks on strategic installations, including conflict situations and war. These emergencies involve a breakdown of authority, looting and attacks on strategic installations. Complex emergencies include conflict situations and war. Complex emergencies can include food insecurity, epidemics, armed conflicts and displaced populations. According to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, complex emergencies are typically characterized by 1. Extensive violence, 2. Displacements of populations, 3. Loss of life, 4. Widespread damage to both societies and economies, 5. Need for large-scale humanitarian assistance across multiple agencies, 6. Political and military constraints which impact or prevent humanitarian assistance, and 7. Increased security risks for humanitarian relief workers. 4. Pandemic Emergencies Pandemic is an epidemic of infectious disease that has spread across a large region, which can occur to the human population or animal population and may affect healthy and disrupt services leading to economic and social costs. It may be an unusual or unexpected increase in the number of cases of an infectious disease that already exists in a certain region or population or can also refer to the appearance of a significant number of cases of an infectious disease in a region or population that is usually free from that disease. These emergencies involve a sudden onset of a contagious disease that affects health but also disrupts services and businesses, bringing economic and social costs. Pandemic emergencies may occur as a consequence of natural or man-made disasters. These have included the following epidemics, Ebola, Zika, avian flu, cholera, dengue fever, malaria, yellow fever and coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Disaster risk. Having described disaster, it is necessary to discuss disaster risk. Disaster risk can be described as the potential loss of life, injury, or destroyed or damaged assets that could occur to a system, society or a community in a specific period of time, determined probabilistically as a function of hazard, exposure, vulnerability and capacity. How a disaster affects society are a function of the hazard, vulnerability, and exposure. In the technical sense, disaster risk is defined through the combination of three terms, hazard, exposure and vulnerability. To enhance our understanding of the meaning of disaster risk, we need to describe these three terms, that is, hazard, exposure and vulnerability. Hazard, hazard can be described as a process, phenomenon or human activity that may cause loss of life, injury or other health impacts, property damage, social and economic disruption or environmental degradation. Hazards may be single, sequential or combined in their origin and effects. Each hazard is characterized by its location, intensity or magnitude, frequency, and probability. Exposure Exposure may be described as the situation of people, infrastructure, housing, production capacities and other tangible human assets located in hazard-prone areas. Consequently, exposure refers to people, property, systems or elements present in hazard zones that are thereby subject to potential losses. Measures of exposure can include the number of people or types of assets in an area. These can be combined with the specific vulnerability and capacity of the exposed elements to any particular hazard to estimate the quantitative risks associated with that hazard in the area of interest. Vulnerability Vulnerability is the ability or resiliency of society to withstand a disaster. Vulnerability can also be described as the conditions determined by physical, social, economic and environmental factors or processes which increase the susceptibility of an individual, a community, assets or systems to the impacts of hazards. 
vulnerability is multidimensional in its nature, and next to the four dimensions above, some authors also include cultural and institutional facto RS. Examples include, but are not limited to, poor design and construction of buildings, inadequate protection of assets, lack of public information and awareness, high levels of poverty and education, limited official recognition of risks and preparedness measures, disregard for wise environmental management or weak institutions, and governance, for example including corruption etc. For example, when a settlement is established on the shores of a river, hydrologists can identify and characterize flood hazard by carrying out a hydraulic analysis. According to the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, under definition, a hazard is characterized by its location, intensity or magnitude, frequency and probability. In some countries, such hazard areas outline the geographic extent of floods that have a 100-year period of possible return. Any people, assets, infrastructure, and ecosystems located inside the area are all exposed to potential damage from floods. The degree of potential damage is then characterized by the area's vulnerability. For example, this can be defined by the physical structure of a building, as well as by the social and economic characteristics of a system. Additionally, hazard vulnerability can be characterized by the capacities of society to cope with a hazard. The Four Phases of Disaster Management When disaster strikes, businesses that close down run the risk of never reopening, especially with no plan of action in place. While there is no way to lower the risk of a natural disaster or a widespread health crisis like COVID-19, there are critical measures that an organization can take to protect its people, assets and bottom line in the wake of a disaster. While creating a business continuity management plan for your organization, consider the four phases of disaster management and how each phase will affect your business before, during and after a crisis. Phases of disaster management are known as disaster management cycle phases. Here are the four phases of disaster management that take place in four key phases, mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Here is a figure showing that the four phases of disaster management. All organizations are in at least one phase at any given moment in time. Understanding these four phases will empower your organization to prepare for and respond to crises in a smarter, more informed way. Making the right decisions will give your organization the best chance at survival and recovery following an unanticipated event. Let us take a closer look at what each of the disaster management phases means. Phase 1, Mitigation Meaning, to prevent future emergencies and take steps to minimize their effects. The mitigation phase occurs before a disaster takes place. Here, an organization will take steps to protect people and property, while also decreasing risks and consequences from a given disaster situation. The organization's main goal is to reduce vulnerability to disaster impacts, such as property damage, injuries and loss of life. Examples of mitigation may include conducting a property inspection to discover ways to fortify the building against damage. The organization may also revise zoning and land use management to further prevent or reduce the impact of a disaster. Phase 2, Preparedness. Meaning, to take actions ahead of time to be ready for an emergency. The preparedness phase also occurs before a disaster takes place. Here, an organization attempts to understand how a disaster might affect overall productivity and the bottom line. The organization will also provide appropriate education while putting preparedness measures into place. Examples of preparedness may include hosting a training, education, drills, tabletop exercises and full-scale exercises on disaster preparedness. This ensures that stakeholders know what to do in the event of an emergency. Organizations may also assemble a business continuity team to assemble a strategic plan that allows the business to recover after a crisis. The team will create a business continuity plan outline and list of resources needed to recover from a disaster. Phase 3, Response. Meaning, to protect people and property in the wake of an emergency, disaster or crisis. The response phase occurs in the immediate aftermath of a disaster. 
organizations must focus their attention on addressing immediate threats to people, property and business. Occupant safety and well-being largely depends on its preparedness levels before disaster strikes. As the response period progresses, the focus will typically shift from immediate emergency issues to conducting repairs, restoring utilities, re-establishing operations and cleaning up. The organization will also need to begin planning the reconstruction of damaged infrastructure. The most notable example of the response phase is to ensure that people are out of harm's way. The organization will then move on to assess the damage, implement disaster response plans, triage cleanup efforts and start resource distribution as necessary. Businesses will also need to navigate building closures, preliminary damage assessments and hampered communication with stakeholders, like staff, vendors and suppliers, due to shutdowns. Phase 4 Recovery. Meaning, to rebuild after a disaster in an effort to return operations back to normal. The recovery phase takes place after a disaster. This phase is the restoration of an organization following any impacts from a disaster. By this time, the organization has achieved at least some degree of physical, environmental, economic, and social stability. The recovery phase of a disaster can last anywhere from six months to a year or even longer depending on the severity of the incident. An example of recovery is creating strategic protocols and action plans to address the most serious impacts of a disaster. An organization will work to obtain new resources, rebuild or create partnerships, and implement effective recovery strategies. The organization will also want to take steps to reduce financial burdens, rebuild damaged structures and reduce vulnerability to future disasters. Identifying and understanding risk, the foundation of risk reduction. Awareness, identification, understanding and measurement of disaster risks are all clearly fundamental underpinnings of disaster risk management. Disaster risk reduction is about decisions and choices, including a lack of so risk information has a role in five key areas of decision making. 1. Risk identification. Because the damages and losses caused by historical disasters are often not widely known, and because the potential damages and losses that could arise from future disasters, including infrequent but high impact events, may not be known at all, DRM is given a low priority. Appropriate communication of robust risk information at the right time can raise awareness and trigger action. 2. Risk Reduction Hazard and risk information may be used to inform a broad range of activities to reduce risk, from improving building codes and designing risk reduction measures, such as flood and storm surge protection, to carrying out macro-level assessments of the risks to different types of buildings for prioritizing investment in reconstruction and retrofitting, for example. 3. Preparedness. An understanding of the geographic area affected, along with the intensity and frequency of different hazard events, is critical for planning evacuation routes, creating shelters, and running preparedness drills. Providing a measure of the impact of different hazard events, a potential number of damaged buildings, fatalities and injuries, Secondary hazards, makes it possible to establish detailed and realistic plans for better response to disasters, which can ultimately reduce the severity of adverse natural events. 4. Financial Protection Disaster risk analysis was born out of the financial and insurance sector's need to quantify the risk of comparatively rare high-impact natural hazard events. As governments increasingly seek to manage their sovereign financial risk or support programs that manage individual financial risks, for example, microinsurance or household earthquake insurance. 5. Resilient Reconstruction Risk assessment can play a critical role in impact modeling before an event strikes, in the days leading up to a cyclone, for example, or it can provide initial and rapid estimates of human, physical, and economic loss in an event's immediate aftermath. Moreover, risk information for resilient reconstruction needs to be available before an event occurs, since after the event there is rarely time to collect the information needed to inform the resilient design and land use plans. Categories of Disaster Risk Management Actions 
Disaster Risk Management AC Tones can be classified into three categories, 1. Prospective Disaster Risk Management, 2. Corrective Disaster Risk Management, and 3. Compensatory Disaster Risk Management, also referred to as Residual Risk Management. 1. Prospective Disaster Risk Management Prospective disaster risk management activities address and seek to avoid the development of new or increased disaster risks. They focus on addressing disaster risks that may develop in future if disaster risk reduction policies are not put in place. Examples are better land use planning or disaster resistant water supply systems. 2. Corrective disaster risk management. Corrective disaster risk management activities address and seek to remove or reduce disaster risks that are already present and which need to be managed and reduced now. Examples are the retrofitting of critical infrastructure or the relocation of exposed populations or assets. 3. Compensatory disaster risk management. Compensatory disaster risk management activities strengthen the social and economic resilience of individuals and societies in the face of residual risk that cannot be effectively reduced. They include preparedness, response and recovery activities, but also a mix of different financing instruments, such as national contingency funds, contingent credit, insurance and reinsurance and social safety nets. Disaster Risk Reduction Strategies Disaster risk reduction aimed at preventing new and reducing existing disaster risk and managing residual risk, all of which contribute to strengthening resilience and therefore to the achievement of sustainable development. Disaster risk reduction is the policy objective of disaster risk management, and its goals and objectives are defined in disaster risk reduction strategies and plans. Disaster risk reduction strategies and policies define goals and objectives across different time scales, with concrete targets, indicators and time frames. Disaster risk management involves activities related to 1. Prevention, activities and measures to avoid existing and new disaster risks, often less costly than disaster relief and response. For instance, relocating exposed people and assets away from a hazard area. 2. Mitigation, the lessening or limitation of the adverse impacts of hazards and related disasters. For instance, constructing flood defenses, planting trees to stabilize slopes and implementing strict land use and building construction codes. 3. Transfer, the process of formally or informally shifting the financial consequences of particular risks from one party to another whereby a household community, enterprise or state authority will obtain resources from the other party after a disaster occurs, in exchange for ongoing or compensatory social or financial benefits provided to that other party. For instance, insurance. 4. Preparedness, the knowledge and capacities of governments, professional response and recovery organizations, communities and individuals to effectively anticipate, respond to, and recover from the impacts of likely, imminent or current hazard events or conditions. For instance, installing early warning systems, identifying evacuation routes and preparing emergency supplies. Disaster Risk Management Cycle Disaster risks can be reduced through systematic efforts to analyze and manage the causal factors of disasters, including reduced exposure to hazards, lessened vulnerability of people and property, wise management of land and the environment, and improved preparedness for adverse events. Disaster management is about organizing and directing resources to cope with a disaster and coordinating the roles and responsibilities of responders, private sector organizations, public sector agencies, non-profit and faith-based organizations, volunteers, donations, etc. The ultimate goal of the disaster management leader is to minimize the event's impact, something that involves preparedness, response, recovery and mitigation. This concept of disaster risk reduction, instead of just responding to a crisis, is embodied in the disaster risk management cycle. When properly implemented, the disaster management cycle can lessen the impact of a catastrophic event. It can also incorporate the policies and emergency responses needed for a full, expedited recovery. The disaster risk management cycle consists of five stages, prevention, risk mitigation, preparedness, response and recovery.
Here is a figure showing that the disaster risk management cycle. Now, let us discuss the stages of a disaster risk management cycle. 1. Prevention. The best way to address a disaster is by being proactive. This means identifying potential hazards and devising safeguards to mitigate their impact. Although this stage in the cycle involves putting permanent measures into place that can help minimize disaster risk, it is important to acknowledge that disasters cannot always be prevented. Prevention involves scenarios such as the following. Implementing an evacuation plan in a school, for example, showing teachers how to lead students to safety in the event of a tornado or fire. Planning and designing a city in a way that minimizes the risk of flooding, for example, with the use of locks, dams or channels to divert water away from populous areas. 2. Risk reduction or mitigation. Mitigation aims to minimize the loss of human life that would result from a disaster. Risk reduction minimizes the vulnerabilities and disaster risks to society. Tasks may include preventative measures to avoid future disasters, such as planting trees in deforested areas to prevent future mudslides, or mitigation efforts to lessen the impact of hazards, such as earthquake resistance building codes. Ideally, lessons learned from the latest disaster have been incorporated in risk reduction measures. Both structural and non-structural measures may be taken. A structural measure means changing the physical characteristics of a building or an environment to curb the effects of a disaster. For example, clearing trees away from a house can ensure that dangerous storms do not knock down the trees and send them crashing into homes and public buildings. Non-structural measures involve adopting or amending building codes to optimize safety for all future building construction. 3. Preparedness. The preparedness phase includes activities such as training, exercises, warning systems, and stockpiling of equipment and supplies. Preparedness is an ongoing process in which individuals, communities, businesses and organizations can plan and train for what they will do in the event of a disaster. Preparedness is defined by ongoing training, evaluating and corrective action, ensuring the highest level of readiness. Fire drills, active shooter drills and evacuation rehearsals are all good examples of the preparedness stage. 4. Response. The response is what happens after the disaster occurs. It involves both short and long-term responses. Disaster response is predominantly focused on immediate and short-term needs and is sometimes called disaster relief. Response phase tasks may include search and rescue, firefighting, emergency medical support and evacuation. This is the phase where foreign M militaries can best provide assistance. Ideally, the disaster management leader will coordinate the use of resources, including personnel, supplies and equipment, to help restore personal and environmental safety, as well as to minimize the risk of any additional property damage. During the response stage, any ongoing hazards are removed from the area, for example, in the aftermath of a wildfire, any lingering fires will be put out, and areas that pose a high flammability risk will be stabilized. 5. Recovery. The fifth stage in the disaster management cycle is recovery. The recovery task of rehabilitation and reconstruction begins soon after the emergency phase has ended, and should be based on pre existing strategies and policies that facilitate clear institutional responsibilities for recovery action and enable public participation. This can take a long time, sometimes years or decades. Recovery programs, Coupled with the heightened public awareness and engagement after a disaster, afford a valuable opportunity to develop and implement disaster risk reduction measures and to apply the Build Back Better principle. Military assistance may have an impact through the recovery and risk reduction phase based on specific activities it is conducting. It involves stabilizing the area and restoring all essential community functions. Recovery requires prioritization, first, essential services like food, clean water, utilities, transportation and health care will be restored, with less essential services being prioritized later. Ultimately, this stage is about helping individuals, 
communities, businesses and organizations return to normal or a new normal depending on the impact of the disaster. Conclusion Disaster risk reduction strategies and management have been discussed in this video. Disaster risk management is the application of disaster risk reduction policies and strategies, to prevent new disaster risks, reduce existing disaster risks, and manage residual risks, contributing to the strengthening of resilience and reduction of losses. Disaster risk management actions can be categorized into prospective disaster risk management, corrective disaster risk management and compensatory disaster risk management. There are four main types of disaster, natural disasters, man-made disasters, complex emergencies, and pandemic emergencies. Disaster risk reduction aimed at preventing new and reducing existing disaster risk and managing residual risk, all of which contribute to strengthening resilience and therefore to the achievement of sustainable development. When properly implemented, the disaster management cycle can lessen the impact of a catastrophic event. It can also incorporate the policies and emergency responses needed for a full, expedited recovery. The disaster risk management cycle entails five steps, prevention, risk mitigation, preparedness, response and recovery. Hope the video is educative and beneficial to you. What aspect of disaster risk reduction strategies and management discussed in this video do you consider to be most crucial? Post your answer to this question in the comment section below. If you are new here. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. If this video has been helpful and beneficial to you, then, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and leave a comment below. Thank you for seeing the risk management of everything videos.